welcome back. I'm George. I was just answering some comments from the last video that we posted. Well, uh, today, uh, this video is going to be a pretty direct video and pretty simple. It's one that we got a comment uh, quite a while ago, and I finally got it caught up. And they're talking about making stills. Um, and, and there's a lot of different things that you can repurpose. Uh, but one that I found that's really, really unique and really easy to do is an old beer keg. Now, this is a 7.5 gallon beer keg. Um, and they, you know, of course you get the 15.5 gallon, it, it, it doesn't matter. It, they come in different sizes, different shapes, but they're all made basically about the same way. Uh, and they come, this one I got at like a yard sale for, I got one of 20 bucks for it, so it's well worth it. Um, the, the good part about this is, is it's already got a two inch clamp on the top or two inch base. So a standard two inch column fits perfect. So what we've got to do though is we've got to get the insides of this out, get it emptied and get it clean. And that's usually the challenge. So uh, come in closer and we're going to show you how to take the center out before you start making this into a still. And we're going to go through drilling a hole in the side of it so that you can insert, it's around here somewhere, I'm going to put a 2000 watt heater element in there. Let's do it. This is what the top of your keg is going to look like. And in most cases, they'll all look very, very similar or exactly the same. Let's get a closer view here. And I want to show you the key points and uh, how to get this puppy out. First of all, they'll come preloaded, which means they've got pressure on them. So please do this first. See this little knot right here? Push down on that and you'll notice that it's spring loaded. See that? If there's any pressure in there, it will release. Uh, if you do what I'm getting ready to do next, without releasing that pressure, uh, once you get this off, uh, you're not going to have any problem with it coming out. That pressure is going to blow it out of there. So make sure you release the pressure first. That's right there. Now, keep in, you see these two slots? There's a slot and there's a slot. Well, those two slots are going to line up with two notches that are inside this ring. So what we're going to do is first we're going to take this ring out and you'll be able to tell it's a slip ring. If you go around this slip ring and it's real small, you'll see there's a place right here where it stops. Right there. So you see that? What we're going to do is we're going to pry that out. We'll get that out here in the center and then we'll grab it with some needle nose pliers and that ring will come out completely. You just pull the ring out and set it aside. After that, we're going to take a hammer and a screwdriver or a chisel, and we're going to, you see this lug, this lug, and this lug. That's what you use to put the Sankey connector to the top of it. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to tap on that, and that will rotate this entire valve around. And we'll continue to tap it until those lugs line up with those holes. When that happens, this whole unit will slide right out. Let's get to work. Now these can be tricky. So I'm going to knock this little tiny flat tip screwdriver up underneath it. And there you go. See, I got it popped out. I'm going to grab it with these needle nose pliers. And you'll see that that ring just comes out almost all by itself. And there's your ring. Now that's the retainer. Now the next part is we're going to use a little bit of a larger screwdriver and we're going to beat this around until we can line these lugs up. Whoops, there they are. You see I didn't have to go far. That one's pretty loose. Now this is amazing, see that? They line up and that whole center will slide right out. Now that goes all the way down to the bottom. Now you can keep this. Uh, I don't know what you're going to use it for, but just in case you ever wanted to use this keg again, uh, you can return this back in there and use it as a beer keg, I guess, or whatever you want. Now it's time to empty this. And we're going to empty it, uh, clean it out, and then we'll get ready to drill our hole in the side. Okay, next step. We're going, to, uh, it, we're going to drill a hole to insert this 2,000 watt heater element. So what I did was, as I took my outside calipers, and what I, I already know what the size is, but I just want to measure this. 
and that's what I get. I get like a, an inch and a quarter for the threads. So I got myself an inch and a quarter. See, that fits right over it perfectly. So I got an inch and a quarter carbide, tungsten carbide, um, whole bit, whole, yeah, a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a hole in the side of this so that I can screw this into it. And we're going to see how all of that works. Now, where do you put the hole? Because remember, once you put the hole there, you can't move it. So you got to get it right the first time. Here we go. Mark the bottom of the keg right here. So this is the lip that supports the keg. And then the actual bottom of the keg is right here underneath. So from this line, I know this is the bottom of the keg. Uh, I measured up three inches, three and a half inches, and four inches. Now, why did I do that? Because that gives me an idea of where I want to put this. Now remember, that heating element sits in there and there's going to be a lot of thermal energy that's going to move up. But there's also an equal amount of thermal energy that's going to try to move down. So you don't want it too low because then you'll start scorching everything on the bottom. And you don't want it too high because you'll never get the bottom warm enough. It'll take forever for this to get warm, but this will be boiling. So we don't want to do that. So what we've come up with is there's three inches, there's four inches, Three and a half inches gives me enough space down here for that thermal energy to travel down, but at the same time, the majority of that thermal energy is going to move up. And any liquid in here is going to heat and circulate and rotate back down underneath of this. So we're going to put our hole at three and a half inches. Uh, you can put it where you like. Now, if you're going to put in two elements, I'd still recommend the first one at three and a half, and then put your next element, if you're going to use multiple elements, two-thirds the way up so that you can turn the static one off once it gets hot. So let's get to drilling. Now that I've got it set on its side, I've got two blocks of wood here to keep it from rotating rolling left and right. But what I've also got is, you see if I push down, so I'm going to use two paint stirring sticks and place those under this end just to shore it up so that now when I push down on it, give it some pressure, it doesn't go anywhere. So let's drill that pilot hole. There's the pilot hole, so guess what? That's where that hole is going to be. I can't move it. Are you ready? Let's go. Now it's going to make a lot of noise. I stopped. Uh, that tungsten carbide bit's not doing very well, so I've got my one and a quarter inch uh, bimetal bit, and I'm going to put that on the drill, and we're going to get this hole drilled here. And that should work out a whole lot easier. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. Went right through it. Now, next step. We'll bring this up here. And we'll show you now we've got our one inch hole, or actually our one and a quarter inch hole, and that's going to receive our element. And I'll fiddle around with that until I get it to screw in. Uh, all I got to do is just sand the burrs off of that, and we'll be back with you. Well, we've made it to the last, to the final portion. Uh, so here's a hole. Uh, it's a one and a quarter inch hole, and I found out quickly that the one inch NPT does not fit in a one and a quarter inch hole. So what I got here is I got me an extra hole. Remember, I told you you can't move them. Uh, so what I did is I got this plug and the plug that fits it up there. Oh, shit. So now I got a drain spout and that screws right in. It's pretty tough, but it screws right in now. But I also used a tap. So uh, if you got a tap and die set that really comes in handy, this one's for a one to a one and a half inch NPT. Uh, which is the threads here, national pipe thread. Uh, so what I had to wound up doing was I drilled a hole on the other side. So doggone, uh, this really made it easy. I should have thought of it in the beginning about having two holes because it makes it so much easier to clean out. Uh, all right. So I drilled a one and an eighth inch hole. And then I kind of sanded down the burrs. I used a little Dremel wheel and sand down the burrs. And this puppy 
goes right in there nice and snug and I've already filled it up with water to test it so it's watertight and uh, the last thing I want to show you now see now I've got a still with an electric element inside 2000 watt element which is more than enough to take care of this now the last thing I'll show you is remember I told you about that two inch top I just happened to have a column from my uh, three gallon mighty mini or it, you can get it for the uh, any of the stills that have a two inch column is going to fit right on top of this keg and there we go so there you have it two inch column on a beer keg which is ready to go all I got to do is wire it, plug it into my PID and move out all right so listen this is all we got for today remember what we did was you know we, we measured up about three and a half inches we put a 2000 watt heater element in we got an extra hole I drew a one and a quarter inch hole so a one inch plug actually fit that but the one inch uh, heating element I had to drill a one and an eighth inch hole uh, because it was just a little bit smaller so and I also used the tap and I tapped some just some beginning of threads in it so to give it something to go into and uh, it worked it'll work just perfectly so until next time happy distilling